This program is powered by the virtual dot show, making your offline events virtual. Ladies and gentlemen, the host of Web at Virtual, Dr. Plamen Russo. Hello and welcome back to our Web at Virtual program. Uh, I would say now the exciting part of it, the part where we touch with innovation and the part where we present some of the finest startups that are part of our COVID Global Health Security Challenge and uh, our Founders Games. Today we have three amazing ones. Yesterday we had a little bit later stage startups. Today we have uh, a little bit earlier stage startups. So we are changing the, the, the flavor also of, of the people and, and uh, of the, the level of the startup development, not the ideas. The ideas are always phenomenal. Before that, I would like to present you the today's jury. We have Bill Kenny. Uh, Bill has been founded three companies and currently leads Meet, Jason Chen. Jason has more than 20 years of experience advising entrepreneurs, startups, um, and um, he is also CEO of VentureScope. We have David Picarell. David is an early stage investor at YesVC. And we have Susan Mc, uh, uh, McClintock, who is the investor, director of Sustainable Ventures. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you for joining us in this panel. And uh, we shall be talking uh, with you uh, upon everyone's uh, participation and everyone's um, uh, pitch. So um, I would like to start without further ado the, uh, with the first startup who, as you know, the investors are going to ask questions for three minutes and the startup itself has to pitch three minutes. And the first who will be here on, the, on that stage, on that virtual stage of Webit Virtual is um, Orvium presented by Antonio Romero. Orvium is a web platform that accelerates scientific, uh, publish, uh, scientific publishing by helping universities and institutions to create open access journals and streamline peer review. So, uh, Antonio. Hello, thank you very much. Nice to have you with us. Uh, you have three minutes, please start now. Okay, I'm controlling the screen. So, Thank you very much for, for this opportunity. So, and I would like to start saying that researchers, as you know, have to publish papers in order to share their findings. And actually this makes scientific publishing very important for, of course, for their careers, but also very important for global scientific progress. But the problem today is that there is no uh, a platform to do this efficiently. So as, um, as you said, um, I'm Antonio, I'm co-founder of Forview, and during my years that I have been working in research at CERN, I realized that uh, there are many consequences. And I'm trying to... Okay. Sorry, yeah. It takes a bit of delay. So the first thing is that uh, scientific publishing is very slow, and authors have to wait long periods of time in order to see their work published. And on the other hand, they don't have enough incentive or recognition for all the contributions that they do. But something very critical is that it is becoming very, very costly for institutions who has to pay millions every year to publish research and to access research. This, of course, generates a frustration in the academy, in the research community, but also a delay that impact how research uh, gets into our society, how the benefits of research gets in, into our society. And we believe that, that science, okay, sorry, <laughs> the, the second, the other one, <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. We believe that science has to be open and it has to be faster. And for that, we believe that we should bring the control of scientific publishing to researchers. And this is why we are creating a platform that makes very easy for scientists and, and for universities and research laboratories to create journals and operate them in the matter of minutes. So this is like WordPress is today for creating a website or medium, a blog. So it's the same, but for scientific publishing. And this will open the market and will increase the adoption of different journals and to especially the adoption of open access, which today is a bit difficult to run and a bit costly. 
And the scientific publishing market is 32 billion. This is what we spend in scientific publishing every year. But the big opportunity is that now from the institutional level, like the European Union, for example, they are requiring faster publication times and to do it in open access. So we need solutions that can, that can help to, to get in that direction and to do it soon. And our business model is pretty simple. We are basically a software as a service platform. So we are cloud-based and we offer this solution to universities, research institutions. And for the go-to-market strategy, our main goal is to establish partnership with the research institutions and universities. Thank you, Antonio. Sorry for interrupting okay. you, but two sure. minutes are gone. Yeah, so uh, and the opportunity to answer the questions of, uh, sure. of our esteemed jury. Uh, I would like to uh, give the floor now to the jury members. David, maybe you start with you. Yeah. Sorry. Hi, Antonio. Uh, no problem, no problem. Uh, yes. <laughs> Technical problem, no problem. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. So who from our jury would like to start with the questions? Okay. Uh, hi, Antonio. So it seems as if hi. you're helping to address, you know, the collaboration on the journal part of it or writing part of it. Do you plan to go into sort of collaboration or coordination in terms of funding and actually doing the research? Well, funding is, of course, very, very important area for scientific research. Um, but we are now focused on, on publishing itself. So actually, I mean, as soon as the, the sooner you publish and the more, uh, let's say, visibility you give to your work, you are actually helping in funding this research. But we don't have that currently in our platform. Uh, it's something that we would like maybe in the future, but our focus today is more on the, on the operation of the journal and scientific validation. Yeah. Great, okay, another question. Please uh, go hi, ahead. Antonio. Hi, Antonio. This is Jason. Um, maybe you you might have gotten to this later on in your in your presentation. But how many customers or potential customers have you spoken to already, as well as any potential channel partners, distribution partners? So yes. So basically, okay. We we recently ran uh, into an edtech program uh, in Delft with the Dutch Education in, uh, Universities. And basically, we're preparing a pilot for a very important university there. I'm sorry, I cannot disclose publicly the name because we are still in agreement, but uh, it's uh, one of the most important engineering universities in the world. And we are also in partnership, creating a partnership with a big research institutions um, that uh, I would be glad also to share it with you later on uh, with the name because we are also in agreement. So, yeah. But definitely, this is, uh, I mean, we're taking our network and background the, all the people we know from our uh, work at CERN, and, and we are using it to establish a relationship and partnership with them. Definitely. All right, uh, other questions? I don't see anyone from the jury requesting. Yeah, Susanna, Susanna had her hand up. All right, a lot of secrets uh, from, uh, from your sites, uh, uh, Antonio. Um, which city from uh, in Spain are you now? I'm now in the south of Spain, uh, in Andalusia, but uh, actually our office is in Vitoria, in the north of Spain, but I had to travel back uh, due to the <laughs> COVID uh, problems, yeah, so. Susan, uh, you got one more question, please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, yeah. hi Antonio, thanks for presenting. Thank you. Um, what is distinctive about this offer and what else is anybody already doing in the market? So basically, okay, you mean about the competition, I believe? Uh, sure, so basically, yeah. yeah, our major competitors, apart from traditional publishers who has their own platform and their own way of dealing with scientific publishing, what we want is to shift from this uh, market controlled by these few big companies to move it to uh, universities and research laboratories. And in this area, we have uh, something that is called OGS, which is a platform that is now used uh, for running these journals, but it's not a cloud-based platform. It's uh, not so easy. And we found that universities have many problems uh, supporting IT, uh, the IT infrastructure, uh, making them available online and, and giving them visibility enough so they are uh, effective. Thank you very much. Thank you all for this. Uh, the time is up. Uh, thank you very much, Antonio. Stay with us. I would like to introduce our second uh, second uh, uh, participant in this um, 
online virtual contest. Uh, the company is called Omoguru, presented by uh, Vanya Andric, if I say it the right way. Uh, yes, she's from, uh, from Croatia. Omniguru Hi. makes reading easier and improves uh, dyslexic reading skills. The Omniguru, uh, the Omniguru reader um, is a, mo a mobile app offers a set of specific tools that facilitate reading for dyslexics. Um, Croatia, you should be I, on the screen now. Yes, I am, but my slides are not. Um... You should have the remote control. Use the arrows on your screen as you have been uh, um, okay. doing the training. Okay. Hi. Right. Uh, my name is Vanya, and I'm going to present on Mogur. So we are a team of top designers, scientists, innovators, tech, and business experts, all with 10 plus years experience in our respective fields. Uh, take a moment and look uh, how a dyslexic person sees text. And uh, it's not moving. I don't have control over the slide. Use the, use the arrows up and down. I'm, but I'm using the arrows, the yeah. So take a moment and uh, look how a dyslexic person sees text. Uh, so this is not a glitch uh, in the stream. Uh, they feel frustrated and angry because they can do something so simple to others. 10% uh, of the world population uh, is facing the uh, same issue every day. And because they have unique needs in terms of text appearance, there was no one-size-fits-all uh, solution until now. So Omoguru Innovative Reading Environment reduces reading difficulties, improves reading ability, and fosters reading. Core of the solution is Omotype, efficient, beautiful, and smartphone system. It's based on research and excessive testing, so we know that uh, uh, it reduces reading time, number of mistakes, and mental effort required to read. But what is most important, for the first time, font is developed as something dynamic, something that can be adapted to the needs of every individual user. So mobile app optimizes the use of homotype and includes tools for better reading rhythm, focus, and reading speed. Now, this combination makes the most powerful reading tool for dyslexics today. We target over 130 million people in these four languages, but our primary focus is over 10 million students aged 10 to 16. Now, over 15,000 mobile app users have read over 150,000 pages in the past year. Uh, mobile app is free, but we do offer a premium version uh, under monthly and yearly subscription. Uh, most of our, re our revenue comes from selling licenses to publishers, schools, institutions, and companies. We are now developing a web application. Our solution is focused on people with reading difficulties, but it is designed with a bit of a twist. This environment enables reverse inclusion. That means parents, uh, teachers, tutors, and therapists can all work together uh, to support not just dyslexic, but all students. It also opens space for other stakeholders like content providers to be included. And our reading environment has the capacity to take online education to a whole new level. Thank you. That's it. Thank you very Thank much, you. Anya. That's, uh, that was, uh, you, you even did it earlier than supposed to. Thank you. Uh, I would like to open now the floor for the investors to, to ask their questions. Who would like to start yeah. with this? Uh, I have with a this, question. Uh, this is Bill. Hi, Bill. Hi. Um, so, so nice uh, pitch, uh, nice presentation. I'm curious, though, uh, what you've done to validate demand. So, uh, so we are on the market for the past year, right? And uh, we constantly talk with uh, certain researchers, uh, dyslexia experts, and there is a big demand. For example, just uh, yesterday, uh, there was an article on Mashable published that we are included in that was... Uh, that we are recommended by a, a, a parent a expert in, in this area, right? So there is a demand, people are looking for something like this and then uh, we are constantly uh, told that this is something that is uh, needed and... Uh, but it, you know, I, I guess I'm looking for something, if you don't mind, something beyond anecdotal. Uh, can you tell us about revenue? Because that's... Oh, so that's revenue, yeah. Revenue so we. In, yeah, sorry, I didn't understand you. I thought that you're asking for a marketing. Uh, uh, so 50,000 euros is our past year revenue. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we are now uh, 
going for for uh, so this is a product market fee stage that we're in and we are just moving into growth stage so hopefully that will uh, grow according to our plans thank you this is Jason and, um, can you tell me a little bit about how you're marketing your company and your solution so marketing for now is uh, we, we are trying to be mostly organic right uh, some growth hacking uh, we are in, in uh, let's say dyslexia uh, groups really uh, where where there are parents and people who really need this and we are constantly growing to communicating with them uh, we do some PR uh, reviews and recommendations from experts and we do some uh, paid marketing that uh, also well works re really well and uh, our cost of customer acquisition is about uh, half a dollar or something like that Other questions from the jury? Yes, Suzanne. Hi. Uh, she's muted. Uh, Susan is muted. Can you please unmute her from the studio, please? All right. Susan, please go ahead. Hi there. What can you do to protect any intellectual property that you might have built up within the design of the product? So uh, intellectual property for the core of the solution, the font is already done. We have uh, one of the top uh, intellectual property lawyers working on that. Uh, and we are also currently investing in R&D uh, that will have impact on, on how this works. I cannot disclose it because uh, it's, it's supposed to be patented and that will be protected, which would uh, basically enable some sorry, adjustments that I cannot talk about right now. But basically you, it would be strong technological improvement that couldn't be copied so well. So you're going to be having a patent? Yes. All right, all right. So we, that's it, the three minutes are, are gone. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Vanya, for joining us. Please stay with us uh, until the end. Thank I will you. be inviting here on that virtual stage, um, uh, Spearware, if I pronounce it the right way, uh, from uh, and Karol Kornovich, uh, who is uh, is uh, the Screenware is a one uh, in all hardware, software, and content ad tech solution, 3D printing, robots, online courses to teach meaningful uh, skills and engaging hands-on way in classrooms and at homes. So um, I hope that Karol is already Karol. Hi, hello. Hello. Hi. Um, do I know, uh, I don't have your, your location, is it Poland? Yes, that's Poland, yeah. All right, so we have a predominantly Central Eastern European presence today, unlike the previous uh, events. We had uh, currently Spain, Croatia and Poland uh, today. Uh, so two companies from South Central Eastern Europe. Please, the floor is yours. You have three minutes, Carol, good luck. Thank you very much. Uh... Great. So let me let me begin with uh, with a, like basic in introduction now. Uh, how does the old classroom or really the current classroom look like? Uh, if I manage to uh, flip the slides, then it would be helpful. Um, yeah, you have a remote control. Use use your your uh, your your arrows uh, up and down. You should you should have trained that during the, the okay. session. Okay. There Perfect. you go. Yeah. So this is this is you know the early 20th century uh, classroom as you, as you can as you can, as you will see in a second it, it hasn't changed really that much uh, from, uh, from from early 20th century there's like a master teacher there's a group of students um, not much is happening uh, usually it's re about the recurring um, knowledge and uh, we're trying to see how does this education really fit with uh, nowadays situation so we are surrounded by personal computers, uh, right? We are uh, we have uh, personal computers over there that have all the updated information. So how does the future look like, and uh, how should we inspire critical thinking, which is lacking because of uh, well this ease of use, and how should we inspire creative learning? So our response to this problem is to combine uh, big tech. Uh, and make it as simple and, and accessible. First, we started with 3D printing. We made the printer easiest to use on the market. Then we figure out that we can 3D print and design a robot uh, and program them to 
to give a fully spectrum of design possibilities. And finally, we bundle it together with courses that explain how to use both printers and robots in the context of the classroom and e-learning. And we've created all integrated STEAM ecosystem that uh, combines technology, engineering, arts, and math in, uh, in the ecosystem that allows to design a robot, 3D print, uh, props for the classroom, and also first and foremost, folk teachers development and empower them to use it, actually use the technology in the classroom to deliver the core curriculum. So our business model now uh, is in the first stage, we are selling hardware bundles of uh, robots, printers, and material. We include free uh, access to software. So the designing part and the programming part. Uh, now we are, this year we'll launch uh, the, the content part to bundle it all together and to inspire the recurring revenue model coming from the uh, content access. So we are building, we're selling through B2B distributors. We are present in 25 markets now. Just beginning of this year, we, we closed six new deals. The revenues is uh, increasing. We're still receiving orders despite all this crisis. Uh, and we are keeping in close contact with teachers and uh, building the content with them and testing it with them. This is our Thank obsession you. right now. Uh, Thank you the, team, the team is young. Uh, and it's also supported by seasoned season experts from Lego or a VVP of Pearson. Um, and Do you hear me? Do you see me? That, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Sorry. <laughs> All right. No, your time is up. I just wanted to say your time is up. Everything's cool. Fine. Okay. It looks amazing. What you've done looks amazing. I look forward to hear our jury. Just don't, don't forget to unmute yourself, uh, uh, honorable jury, and please go ahead with your questions. You want to start with uh, a question? Anyone? Please go ahead. I'm starting the clock now. Yeah, I'll go. This is Bill. Um, yeah, can you? Uh, yeah, uh, congratulations on your traction. That sounds uh, very compelling. Um, could you? Because um, uh, your problem statement to me uh, wasn't super clear, um, but mm -hmm. maybe you could restate your problem statement in one sentence. That would be really helpful. Right. So we want to inspire hands-on learning and interdisciplinary uh, STEAM education, focusing on teachers. So our goal is to make teachers uh, experiment with a new ways to introduce interdisciplinary learning to connect all the dots. And the dots are 3D printing, robotics, programming, uh, design, all of that. So yeah, there are three sentences, but in a way it's really the hands-on interdisciplinary STEAM approach. Got it. Okay, thank you. Other, so are you, other just to clarify, are you, are you all providing a software package that you then are installing on all these different devices or, or how does this, it wasn't very clear to me how you're integrating with the different um, tools that the teachers are using in the classroom. Right, so we're providing everything. So we provide the printer, the robot set, the 3D design tool, online model base of 60,000 models and access to course base. Uh, it, it's all integrated system. It took us five years to develop. Now we are in the stage of uh, creating more content, more, more scenarios. The hardware part is done uh, for us. So uh, we are pre-software revenue, but we are already, uh, we have some recurring hardware revenue. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah, Suzanne, please. Uh, you have unmute, uh, please uh, unmute yourself, please. Yeah, thank you. How do you achieve scale as in route to market um, through multiple education establishments? Uh, can, can you repeat? I'm not I'm sure if, uh, I've heard correctly. What's your, what's your method to get to, to the scale rollout? Right, so... Uh, the, now we are working with uh, distribution partners. So these are the usually hardware, some, some are software integrators that go out and uh, close the deals with either local governments or directly to private schools. Uh, ours, we are also launching direct uh, actions here in Poland. We want to focus on this market, actually descaling from many markets to really free markets now. Um, and so the next stages are really two options. What I'm mostly focused on is to, band, to, to partner up with uh, 
Microsoft, we, who we are already co-selling partners with them and global education partner, like a real partner, not like Azure partner. Uh, they provide clients for us, so I'm looking to integrate with their software solutions uh, to join their uh, distribution channel. Great, thank you. Thank you. Well, that was that was um, all with the questions from the jury, and now I would like to hear the jury members with their very quick wrap up, uh, their feedback on um, each of the three startups. I would like to start with Bill. Bill, uh, can you please wrap up uh, what you have seen, what you were missing? Uh, it will be a very valuable feedback for all participants, and that's the most important part. Sure. Um, yeah, I think the uh, I think there were some really good uh, parts of the pitches I saw. You know, I think you know as you're building your business, the the things to think about when you're pitching is be be really clear on on what you're trying to accomplish and what your evidence of demand is. Um, and in some cases, uh, yeah, it, and several of you uh, have revenue, so that should be really early. And because there's no better evidence uh, that there's a market. Um, than demand. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, and then um, we really didn't hear much about uh, the competitive market in any of the products. So, uh, you know, where does your product fit? What are your competitive advantages? What's that, what's the competitive landscape like? I think those would also be helpful because that obviously uh, gives us some sense of risk uh, and, uh, you know, the traction or uh, demand gives us some sense of possibility and and uh, it's also good to know a little bit on the risk side. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Susan, can you please uh, take the, the microphone here and share your, your impressions? Thank yeah, absolutely. You. Th thank you to all the teams for presenting. Um, three minutes is a real challenge. And of course, there was no opportunity to cover everything. I think emphasizing Bill's point about competitive position, just um, why you are better than both um, competition, but also whatever has been the previous incumbent technology would be relevant for um, all three pitches. Um, and secondly, to excite kind of venture capital investors, really talk about um, how you're gonna get to scale and get to scale quickly. And I know that um, most of you didn't have time to get through that point in the presentation. Thank you. Uh, just before I give the, the word to, to Jason, Jason, I still wait one point from you uh, in yeah. regards to your uh, vetting for, for the startup, which is very important point. So um, I, will, I will request um, now um, uh, David to take the lead while Jason is making his mind. Uh, perfect. Thanks, everyone, for presenting today. Uh, quick feedback, just in order. For Orvium, we'd just love to know what's differentiated. I know at least in the state side, we have a bunch of companies trying to work on a similar thing. And that's why I sort of asked the question around, do you have more than just sort of the text-based collaboration? For Omoguru, thought what you're working on is really cool. What I'd love to learn more is there integrations through computers or laptops or other sort of channels in which you could uh, deploy this a lot faster at scale. For Skirware, uh, it's pretty awesome that you've gotten into all these schools. Already, I think the main question is, uh, I think sort of what the other two had said earlier is, uh, how do you continue to scale this? And what I would love to learn more actually is what does the cost structure uh, look like to a school? Because I think that's sort of important in this context. Thank you, thank you. And uh, let's have uh, Jason, who in the middle, in the meantime, didn't do my job easier, but that's not the job, isn't it, Jason? Thank you so much. <laughs> Please share your thoughts. Uh, just wanted to reiterate, you know, what others have said, to be honest. Uh, first of all, great job. Three minutes is not easy. Uh, so the feedback, obviously, if you've had a longer time, you may have gotten to some of these things. Um, Bill mentioned this at the beginning of the feedback. Uh, for early stage companies, I really like to dive in very quickly and hear what, what customer validation you've done, what problem validation you, you've conducted. So uh, obviously the traction that you had, that, that obviously signals something. But if you're able to quantify upfront how many people you've spoken to, you know, from a, you know, obviously direct customers or potential partners, channel partners, that's very, very useful information to kind of level set upright, uh, upfront. Uh, the other thing I'd mention is that uh, we really didn't hear too much about, uh, too much detail about your marketing plan and how you're going to scale, as Susanna mentioned. And then lastly, we'd love to hear more about your teams. 
I think we saw a couple slides uh, where it was flashed up, but you know, what is what about your team, especially as an early stage company, right? What about your team? It, it, what technical skills do you have? What perseverance, what intangibles do you all have that you're bringing to the table that you're going to be able to take this early stage idea, this early stage business and, and build it out? Thank you so much for uh, wrapping up this. And I already see, of course, and you see your own vets and um, you know the result. Um, and it's not an easy result. Now, um, I either have to choose, uh, <laughs> I either have to choose the winner myself or uh, to, to follow the, 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 the vets of the jury. And um, I will do the, the second part because I respect your time and I respect your, your vets. And I respect the fact that uh, actually all the startups were uh, selected very carefully out of thousands of startups. And we select three every day and we present them. So it makes sense that you have been having your, uh, uh, you hear me having your, your vets divided between two. So the situation is that both of startups, uh, both, both startups here have exactly one and the same score of 27.6 points. Um, and this means that we have two winners. And because we already had two winners yesterday, I don't mind to invest a little bit of our own award money at Webit and, um, and congratulate two companies. Because I think that the more the better. And uh, I think that both are great. They are in uh, two different stages of their development, and uh, both of them are have done a great job. I think three of them have done a great job, but both of them have won the, the points of, of the jury. So congratulations to Omoguru and uh, Skiwear. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, so uh, you both will receive free access to Webit. You will receive opportunity to join the Founders Games $1 million award, and you will have a free exhibition stand at Webit so you can meet with all the thousands of investors being there. Here is the time where I have to say thank you all because uh, we are already four minutes beyond time. Um, I would like to wrap up here. Congratulations to the winners. Congratulations to all of you who managed to to, 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 to job, I mean, the three companies who were already selected, you are winners for the fact that you were selected with us. Uh, we had participants this time at this program from Switzerland, from Bangladesh, from Netherlands, from Washington DC US, from Israel, from UK, uh, from Australia, and we had our startups from Spain, Croatia, and Poland. Uh, not to, to, to forget to mention Canada with Jared, Thank you all. We had so many countries participating in the program and way too many uh, being with us watching this live program. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you for asking your questions. Thank you for, for being active. Thank you and stay tuned for next week's editions where we shall be, where we shall be uh, together with Tim Draber. Uh, we shall be together with the father of internet, uh, Dr. Vint Cerf. And there will be some other great surprises coming up next. Thank you. Enjoy a wonderful day and wonderful holidays uh, in Eastern, some parts of Eastern Europe. It's Easter, the Orthodox Easter. Enjoy a wonderful, beautiful Easter, all of you who celebrate. And I look forward to see you again live next week. Thank you to everyone who was behind the, the studio of my team doing a great job. Thank you all. <laughs>